So the whole world, or Greek big portions of it, certainly big powers, just step back and watch this, 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 this obvious uh, genocide uh, happen um, for 50 years. Uh, and why are they supporting Israel? That is a very long story and an interesting one, but for a variety of reasons, the European Union, and especially the United States, seem really invested in the settler colonial project called Israel. Uh, the history goes back well over a century with sure. Theodor Herzl and the Zionist movement, which really stems from 19th century European nationalism, the notion that there had to be a Jewish homeland, but not only a Jewish homeland, but one in historic Palestine. The British government actually offered other possibilities, Uganda, Western Australia, uh, but Herzl and others insisted on Palestine, which of course was um, occupied by Palestinians. Uh, Palestine at that time was a province of the Ottoman Empire. The British and the French carved up the Ottoman Empire at the end of World War I, and the British took Palestine which they ruled from the end of World War I until 1948 with the foundation of the State of Israel. So there's a very long and complicated history. It's complicated and yet quite simple, which is essentially that the indigenous people of Palestine have been dispossessed of their land, of their rights, and have uh, been restricted to what is now basically about 19% of historic Palestine, of what was the British mandate, and every day lose more land. Um, and lives. And uh, the U.S. has served basically as Israel's protector and has given Israel uh, impunity from accountability. Um, very crucially, I think, uh, in the United States, important to recognize that Zionism is not even a majority Jewish movement. The majority of Zionists are actually non-Jewish, especially Christian fundamentalists. And within the Jewish community, there's been a very distinct shift from uh, really unqualified support to is for Israel to a more critical engagement, especially with the younger generation of Jewish Americans. They've been very alienated by uh, the illegal occupation, and especially the genocide in Gaza in 2014. So uh, I guess what, what's, what's, what, what I'm what I'm thinking about is, is what does the, the powers that be or whatever powers that be in the United States and Europe get out of this? You know, I think the, the interesting question really is the opposite, which is what does Israel get from their support? Because if you look at it from an economic or even a strategic point of view, it would actually make more sense for the U.S. and EU member states uh, to support the Palestinian people from a strategic point of view. Um, it really is a case of the tail wagging the dog. I don't think it's that the U.S. gets much from it. In fact, if anything, I think Israel is a political liability in the Arab and Muslim worlds because of this illegal occupation and because of the oppression of the Palestinian people. So I think when we think about it, Israel doesn't have a lot of oil, right? So uh, what and the notion, which is, I think, popular in certain circles, that Israel is somehow a strategic asset for the U.S. and the Middle East, that's arguable. I think the reality is that it's a tail wagging the dog, and that it's Israel that benefits from U.S. protection um, as well as European support rather than the opposite. We, we, we were talking before earlier about when, when the... Um the community center, the, the gay and lesbian community center and transgender community center in, on 13th Street banned uh, Palestinians and some people spoke up and you were among the people that led the groups that changed that ban and, and that that was that the Israel, this situation in is between Israel and how they treat the Palestinians is one of the places where the progressive movement, the rubber meets the road and yes. the what do you call them, peeps? Peeps. Uh, progressives on everything except for Palestine. As I like to say, peeps are not my peeps. Um, what happened, when I was not involved with Palestine as an issue before February 2011. I had friends who were involved with a group called Siege Busters Working Group, and they were working to end the illegal Israeli blockade of the Gaza Strip, which has been going on for decades now. Um, they were planning an event called A Dance to End Israeli Apartheid. And a very Islamophobic Zionist named uh, 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 
a very Islamic uh, uh, Zionist uh, got involved with uh, this Is this issue. this guy Lucas? Is yes, Michael Lucas, um, decided to, uh, was outraged by the fact that there was Palestine solidarity organizing going on in, um, in, at the center, and so wrote a letter to the executive director who promptly, at his behest, banned uh, Siege Buster's working group and instituted a moratorium, a ban on Palestine solidarity organizing at the center, which is a total outrage. Uh, a friend and colleague of mine, Steve Alt, who is one of the original founding members of the original board of directors uh, that helped uh, establish the center, uh, was outraged by this. And a number of us decided to start this group, New York City Queers Against Israeli Apartheid, which was aimed partly at ending this ban, lifting this ban, and partly uh, at educating the community, the LGBT community, about Israeli occupation and apartheid. Um, after two years, in February uh, 2013, the center did lift uh, the ban. Uh, there's a very long story behind that. I tell the story in the only full-length account of this whole episode on my website, pollingpark.com. You can find it there. It goes to over 30 pages uh, and goes into great deal, detail about this. But I think this is a perfect example of how the pinkwashing of the occupation, uh, the notion that Israel's supposedly superior record on LGBT issues somehow justifies this illegal occupation, um, is now becoming more and more central to the LGBT community. We see this time and again. We saw this uh, last month with the Chicago Dyke March, the attempt by this group called the Wider Bridge, which was founded specifically to pinkwash the occupation, how they disrupted uh, the Chicago Dyke March and hurled false accusations of anti-Semitism against the collective, which, by the way, included uh, Jewish members.